Good morning to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here. We have a lot to talk about this morning. First, a wide shot of the satellite picture, the loop, and you can see Katia now inland over Mexico. We won't really talk about this anymore. Flooding rains will still be an issue in that area, but it has made landfall. Now we have Irma here, and this is going to be an enormous problem. It already is for portions of the northern coast of Cuba, and it has been for all of this area through here, and the story is only two-thirds over at best. Uh, and this, of course, is Jose. Luckily, I don't think it's going to make a direct hit on these islands down here, but it's going to be close enough to bring misery to an already absolutely horrible situation. We need to start off here looking at the information on Irma. This is really unbelievable what's uh, happening here. Major hurricane over the Tampa Bay area. Major hurricane uh, just off of Naples and Fort Myers. Uh, skirting along the north coast of Cuba. And then eventually across the Florida Keys. And then right up into the southwest coast of Florida. And then eventually into the deep south and then kind of dying out over Tennessee. Uh, this is going to be a monumental event in American history, and if people are stupid with the way they react to this, they're going to die. The storm surge, we're going to look at that in a minute, uh, is going to be phenomenal through this area, and I don't mean phenomenal in a good way, and um, it's just, here we go, okay, this is it. So let's go back, and I want to look at the public advisory so that we can talk about some of these issues here. Uh, first of all, Irma still looking at 155 mile per hour winds. Pressure is up pretty significantly, but the winds have not decreased just yet. And it is moving to the west-northwest, so now it has gained a little bit more latitude at 12 miles per hour. So let's scroll down here. Uh, the hurricane warnings, I mean, if you want to read them, check it out yourself. Very, very, very extensive. And the map that I showed you, we can go back and look at it again in a moment. But I want to read about what is very, very important here in terms of life changing and potentially life ending if you're not careful information. Uh, first of all, again, hurricane force winds extend out 70 miles from the center. And now tropical storm force winds 195 miles from the center of circulation. That is an enormous area of energy being translated into the ocean like a giant arm just brushing across the surface, moving the water into the direction of land. And speaking of land, if we scroll down and we look at the hazards affecting land, the storm surge is my biggest concern here, not the category or the wind, but the storm surge. So this is the area from southwest Florida, from Captiva to Cape Sable, so the southwest Florida area, 8 to 12 feet. Cape Sable to Boca Raton, including the Florida Keys, 5 to 10 feet. Venice to Captiva, 5 to 8. The Sewanee River to Venice, including the Tampa Bay area, 3 to 5 feet. Boca Raton to Flagler, Volusia County Line, 2 to 4 feet. And this will happen that it, it's above ground, this storm surge that we're talking about. Saltwater flooding up to 12 feet and two to four feet on the east coast, three to five feet in the Tampa Bay, deadly. And it's going to cause major damage to infrastructure, to homes. And on top of that, you'll have this major hurricane wind field just making matters worse. The deepest water will occur along the immediate coast in areas of onshore winds, where the surge will be accompanied by large and destructive waves, and then the flooding really does depend uh, on many different factors, and it depends on the relative timing of the surge with the tidal cycle, and it can absolutely vary greatly over short distances. You can have a tremendously high surge in one area and just a few miles away, not quite as much. The surge down in the Bahamas is still prevalent, still looking at 15 to 20 feet in some areas, and eventually that will subside. And on the north coast of Cuba in the hurricane warning area, 5 to 10 feet of surge. Now, certainly the wind is a, an issue, and I don't want to ignore this, but 
You know, you can hide from the wind and hunker down and be safe in most situations. That water rise 12 feet and it's moving and it's got all sorts of nasty stuff in it. That's almost impossible to survive when you're talking about that much water, salt water coming your way. Rainfall, a lot of rainfall over portions of uh, Cuba and into the Bahamas, the Keys, and we're talking 25 inch amounts in the Florida Keys. That is ridiculous. They are going to just get blasted. If you have not left the Florida Keys, you need to do so. And uh, I have put a camera and a weather station down in the Keys, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. That's where I've been all night. It has been a harrowing evening. All good, but man, oh man, it's it's a lot of effort. I'm going to talk about it in a minute. I'm actually going to boast about it because I'm very proud. Um, and then into Georgia, uh, I mean, so much rain is just crazy. Uh, and we saw a tremendous amount of rain, of course, with Harvey. Uh, uh, this will be nothing like that, hopefully. And then a few tornadoes are possible today and tonight over southern Florida because of the spin already in the atmosphere. And if you generate thunderstorms through that spin, then it's possible to create tornadic storms that drop a tornado on the ground for a brief period of time. So again, just to look at the map, the hurricane warnings are all this area in red right here. You can see that just as easily as I can, right? So that's all the hurricane warning area, including Lake Okeechobee. So most of the two-thirds section of the Florida Peninsula under hurricane warning and a storm surge warning. This is going to be one historic legendary hurricane that we will remember for a long, long time. And it's not done yet. And what I mean by that, if it just comes out a little bit farther and then comes into Tampa Bay, for example, we could be looking at an epic disaster that would just be crippling. So uh, what we have so far is bad enough considering mainland Monroe, Collier, Lee, all the way up. Yeah, you know, we're talking about Bradenton Beach. Uh, just wow. So real quick, I want to show you something that can really, really help you. I already pulled up the Weather Service page. Good. So if you want to know what's going on in your area, uh, you're curious, you say, hey, I live in the Bradenton Beach area, and I see stuff on TV, and, you know, I'm just not completely sure about what to expect, uh, where can I turn to find exactly what I'm looking for? So you can ask on social media. You can look on different websites and just all over the place and hope that you find the answers. Or you can go to the Weather Service homepage here, weather.gov, right there, weather.gov. And in this area right here, put in the zip code. And this example Bradenton Beach, 34217, 34217. You click on Bradenton Beach, and you get a return page. And then this right here, I talked about this before, and I want to keep talking about it because it's very important because it can help you with information written by people in your area that work at the Weather Service. That is the one you want, the hurricane local statement. Certainly you may read all of them. Uh, the storm surge warning is very important. But the hurricane local statement, I said this before, should be your new best friend right there because it contains a wealth of information tailored to your community, broken down into what to expect, the impact. How will this impact me? This gives you answers to that question, not down to your driveway and front yard, but at least for your area. And it's not just a broad scale, well, there's a hurricane warning from here to there. Okay, well, then what does that mean for me? The hurricane local statement can help you with that. So please, please, please read that, okay? Um, like I said, been out setting up equipment, and it has finally, uh, the time has come, as they say, that Marvin K. Mooney book. Hurricane Impact is our app, and this is where it's really going to shine. We've been in the information mode, posting uh, the videos and other, uh, the, the blog, etc., Twitter feed. It's all been preparedness and information about Irma. Now it's time for the impact. And 
the live cams section of the app. Okay, we've been in news mode with the videos coming out, the discussions, and then the tracking. And all of these will still be very active right here. But now, if you have the app, you can go to weather data and live cams, and voila, I've got one set up in Marathon, Florida, and you won't believe where it is. I worked with Mike Adams. He is from New Jersey. He has helped me on some winter storms, and he just happened to be in Pompano Beach. And I said, hey, will you mind helping me tonight before the rest of my crew gets here tomorrow? And we worked it, and this is what it looks like. We nailed it. It's literally on the side of the bridge here. It's dark right now as I'm recording this. And I took the screenshot, but this is going to be an epic view. And, oh, my goodness, and you can see the pin drop where I put it. This is all in the app, in this Hurricane Impact app. This is what your $4 goes towards, and we're going to add more. This is what I do. I work for you to provide the information, to provide the video blogs, the Twitter posts, etc., to get you in the know that a hurricane is coming and what to expect. Like I said, now it is time for the impact. And the weather station page, this is what I am most proud of because I came up with this idea and I worked with a lot of people to help get it engineered so that we could take state-of-the-art weather equipment and pump that information out live to the app. And so it updates every single minute. The wind speed, the wind gust, the air pressure, and then it's got that same live cam. You can either watch the camera separately or you can watch it right there with the weather station page. They are both right on top of each other so you see what the weather data is from the camera. And it's live. It's not a picture. And it has audio. I'm telling you, go to the App Store. Do me proud. Get that app. It's called Hurricane Impact. It's on the App Store. It looks just like that. That's the logo. That's what it looks like on my iPhone. Hurricane Impact by HurricaneTrack.com. And it says Mark Suddeth in there. And there you go. Get it. It's. Uh, I'm telling you. As long as the infrastructure stays up, this will absolutely knock your socks off, and we're doing it with technology. I'm in Miami in a dry hotel room. I'm fine. While the technology is going to take the beating for us to see what the impact is and to measure the strength of that hurricane. Um, it's not available on Android in a working fashion. We're trying very hard to get it to be but I can't make that promise just yet in time for Irma. Yeah, you can yell and scream about it. I'm just It's all about the funding. I haven't had the funding to keep up the Android app. That's as honest as I can be about it. But keep your fingers crossed. Maybe Saturday, just in time, I can activate and do an update. We're working on it. Let's just say that. You may also support, as people have done. Uh, remember, this is my job, folks, and I have people to pay. And I got a lot of infrastructure bills to pay with the data, everything. If you want to help out, you can send a contribution through PayPal, fund at hurricanetrack.com, and we are on Patreon, the new crowdfunding effort, and that helps to sustain us for the future because I want to be able to do this whenever there's one of these. I want to be a voice that tries to steer you in the right direction, help you understand Things like, hey, the surge is above ground level. It's not just the ocean rising that much. That's flooding normally dry ground above ground level, 5 to 10 feet, 8 to 12, whatever the case may be. And then to bring you these extraordinary live shots from the cameras. We have more coming up. And these are some screenshots from just a little while ago. That's what I do. So I appreciate you following, following along. If you're in Florida and you're dealing with this, I'm trying to help you, okay? And uh, use me as one of several sources. There are plenty out there to help cut through the noise. I have a lot more work to do. Um, we're going to set up more cameras around the west coast of Florida. Uh, probably not much on the east coast because the biggest impact is going to be on that west coast. So we're talking Marco Island, Everglades City, Naples, and then points north from there. My team and I have a lot of work ahead of us. But we're going to use a good deal of the later part of the day on Saturday, later today, uh, and into the evening to get it done. And that will all populate the app, Hurricane Impact, uh, and as well as our subscription service, Hurricane Track Insider. And uh, you can see that on the homepage of our website. 
I wish that I could make every bit of it available to everybody free, but I can't. I have to be able to earn a living, all right? So I'm trying to strike a balance here. I will do screenshots and share those, and I encourage other people to do so, uh, and we can get through this together. Thanks for tuning in. Like I said, I appreciate it. I'm going to go get some sleep. Around the 11 o'clock advisory time, Zach Fridella from New Orleans will do the update on my behalf and a blog post. So be sure to check that. And remember, in the app, one last thing, all the Twitter stuff goes into the app. Anytime we do an update, it goes into the app. So be sure to hit those little refresh curly cue things or pull down to refresh on the videos that get uploaded. Little things like that. If you don't take advantage of them, you know, you're missing out. All right, I'm going to go to bed for a few hours and then get up and work my butt off to show you what Irma is going to be doing and uh, keep you up to date along the way. I'm Mark Settle for HurricaneTrack.com, reporting from Miami, Florida, as we await Hurricane Irma. And I'll be back with you with more later today.